So what exactly is a broadcast microphone? And if we can agree on a definition, what is the best broadcast mic out there? Well, that is a great question. And I think I may have an answer for at least one of those. <laughs> Let's find out. It's actually amazing when you try to search the question, what are broadcast mics? Not only does nothing come up, but there's also a ton of misinformation out there that needs to be dispelled. First of all, a broadcast microphone is not a type of microphone. There are several different types of microphones, including dynamic, condenser, which are the most common these days. There are other kinds that are being lost to time, but still cool nonetheless. If you want to see a video on the differences between all those types of mics, hit me up down below. Maybe we can make a video on that in the future. But let's go back to broadcast mics. The term broadcast is more of a subcategory of microphones. For example, a voiceover mic like the U87AI, it's still a condenser microphone, but it's widely used in the voiceover industry. Therefore, it's kind of gotten the unofficial title of VO mic. Even though the U87AI is a widely coveted microphone for many different uses, including music production and even Foley production. That all said though, I'm guessing you've already figured out the industry that has made broadcast mics a thing. Yeah, broadcast. So broadcast mics are used for broadcast, but why? And does that mean any mic branded as broadcast can be used for well, broadcast. Well, first, let's look at why broadcast has become a title for microphones. If you go far enough back, all microphones were actually broadcast mics. You see, outside of band performers and the odd singer, the only people that really had microphones were broadcasters. And yeah, that's where the term broadcast quality was born. Of course, this was still all marketing ploys, though the strongest mics generally floated to the top of the lists for media companies. As the industry matured and the technology developed, mics were chosen for broadcast situations due to how well they sounded on everyone. Kind of a universal thing. And there was good reason for that. You see, in a broadcast studio, you may have five microphones, but those mics might be used by a multitude of people. Consider a radio station, when the morning person needs to sound just as good as the afternoon announcer or the evening person. Now, you might think it would be easier to just have everyone with their own mic, but that doesn't work either. Media companies wanted uniformity in broadcast, so that means having everything sound the same hour after hour and day after day. So the mics that were chosen the most ended up being referred to as broadcast mics. Lately, one of the things that companies have been doing is using the form factor of a broadcast mic to try to market them. And if you noticed, they all seem to be relatively close to the design of this. This is the RE20 mic from Electro Voice. It has a barrel design, which might come off as somewhat familiar, along with pressure relief along the sides. It's very distinct. Of course, you also have the SM7B design that has been influencing other quote-unquote broadcast designs as well. And of course, you would be forgiven for believing that the design is somehow tied to the actual performance of the microphone, since, you know, that seems to be the available marketing being pushed on several different new mics that are hitting the market. And it does kind of make sense. You see, broadcast mics like the RE20 have had years of rain at the top of the pile for their use in media, meaning the prices are kind of etched in stone and whether or not they're worth it. Those prices are based solely on demand rather than build. But with the relatively new podcast industry starting its own boom, there are a lot of individuals starting out that could not afford these inflated prices. So instead of the mic industry bringing the prices in line, because, you know, business, there has been the push of aesthetic broadcast mics that aren't necessarily fulfilling the main principle of the original concept. So then what is the best broadcast microphone? Well, there's a few ways to answer this question. Scientific testing and method, large scale comparison, perhaps looking at the most expensive and crowning the winner there, or perhaps just by looking at history. I think from that perspective, the RE20 probably takes the crown. You see, these mics weren't chosen at random. 
or by chance. These mics were tried and tested and ended up becoming one of the most iconic microphones for broadcast worldwide. That was no accident. In fact, to this day, these mics are still in use around the world in professional broadcast studios. On the other hand, if you're looking at it from a strictly monetary standpoint, this microphone here might be the one at the top of your list. This is the Neumann BCM-104. It is a broadcast condenser, and it's basically at the top of the list for broadcast microphones, at least from a price perspective. Now, there are more expensive microphones, but as for mics that are specifically marketed as broadcast, I think this one tops the list. By the way, if you're looking for a review on this bad boy, one is in the works, so get subscribed so you don't miss a thing. So what do you do if you actually want a true and tested broadcast microphone? Well, I mean, you go buy one. And the great thing about this is with a lot of radio stations upgrading, you might be able to score yourself one of these relatively cheap. Or you can just settle with the idea of paying for it. But if you aren't in the group of people that can drop 500 bucks on a microphone, well, you're stuck comparing. Get yourself in front of a microphone, compare mics head to head, and of course, listen to reviewers that you trust. Outside of me, because you know, I always trust me. I watch podcastage, Curtis Judd and Tom Buck, just to name a few, that I know all of them are not gonna lead me astray. On top of that, you got to do your research. Now, I'm not saying that a pod mic is a bad purchase, but until you have it compared to an SM58 or a Sennheiser E835, how do you know that you're getting the best mic for your voice? Also, avoid buying mics for aesthetic purposes. So not sexy. I know I joke about the SM58 being an ugly microphone, but from a long-term purchase perspective and sound quality perspective, you might be surprised at how far that mic might serve you. Now, hopefully you're taking something from this video. Hopefully you've learned something from this video. Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video, perhaps with this bad boy.